Hey everyone, it's Darren here from Improved Photography and I am thrilled to join you to show you how to create time-lapse videos in what would otherwise be thought of as a photo editing piece of software and that piece of software is Photoshop. Now don't scratch your head too hard because I don't want it to bleed but I was a little bit blown away when I found out that you could actually make videos inside Photoshop and it was pretty darn cool. I posted a video on Facebook today and everybody loved it and they wanted to know how I did it and I said Photoshop and they said how and I said okay I gotta show you. So I put this video together and I kind of did it the easy bake oven way just to speed things along so you don't have to see my computer processing things and you get to see how I did this and the cool thing is is you don't need to jump into another program that a lot of photographers don't use unless they're working with video on a constant basis such as Adobe Premiere or Final Cut um, so that's pretty darn cool that you don't have to mess around with that so without further ado what do you say let's get started all right the first program that we're most likely going to need is Lightroom most photographers are going to be using Lightroom and Photoshop hand in hand and Lightroom is a huge time saver in this workflow especially if you have a ton of images from a time-lapse photo that you just shot, which is what we're working on. How awesome is that? All right, so what we're gonna do is launch Lightroom, which I already have launched, and we're going to select photos that are similar as far as lighting schemes go. Now, I will warn you and give you a little cautionary advice. Make sure that it's not changing too much, the light as far as white balance, the amount of exposure. You might need to stop um, the time-lapse. Make sure that you're adjusting that to make sure that everything is looking pretty much consistent across the board as far as exposure value, as far as white balance value, just so it looks pretty consistent. Because even though I have synced all the settings together, which we'll talk about here in just a second in Lightroom, you can tell these images clear at the top, the middle, and the bottom do look different. That's because I was a little bit careless um, when putting together the photos, and I just wanted to get it out there and snap and get you content to put these uh, put together in these photos. Now, in order to sync the settings in a perfect world, if these were all the same, um, and they're pretty darn close, I, I will give it that. All you need to do is click on the first photo, go into the develop module of Lightroom, find your best edit that you can possibly do, use an awesome pre uh, preset from Improved Photography's Lightroom Steel that we do every single Black Friday. So tune into improvedphotography.com and check out the 2016 Lightroom presets that Jim Harmer will be practically giving away on Black Friday 2015 in his 2016 um, Lightroom Steel. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But anyway, do your edits. After you do the edits on one photo, you don't have to repeat it on the rest as long as the scene is somewhat similar. So you'll hit G as in golf, then you'll hold your shift key down and press your arrow key over to select a whole row. Then you'll press down, just keep selecting rows below it until you start to see the scene change. All you need to do from here is click sync settings and just make sure that you're not syncing something from local adjustments, spot removal. Um, crop can kind of sometimes be a bad thing if you've cropped images differently or the orientation is really different from image to image, but otherwise you just click synchronize and all the images roughly look the same. In a setting when it's more of a street scene, like this photo of a city with a Prairie Life Fitness in the cinema, the images were roughly the same and the lighting conditions didn't change too drastically, so it was a lot easier to sync these photos together. And then the next step, all we have to do is press G as in golf again, a command or a control A, depending on your operating system of choice, to select all. Then from there, we will click export, choose a folder to put these in, Usually I like to create a new folder on an external hard drive like a Drobo, um, a portable hard drive, my desktop if I have space. Click a new folder, call your new folder time lapse or whatever you may want to call it. Click choose and then the really important thing is that where it says rename to, check that box. Make sure it says custom name sequence. Call them time lapse in Photoshop and Lightroom if you want to. Call them Mike's time lapse, Julie's time lapse, but make sure that it says sequence because it's very important that there's a sequence for the next step. We'll export all these out to that folder that we specified. And one key tip, if your computer is a little bit slower and older, you might have to go back and redo this step and take the quality slider here down to to 50 or 60%, um, which will help Photoshop render the video a little bit easier. Now don't scratch your head too hard. Like I said, we are going to be doing video inside Photoshop, which is pretty darn exciting to me. All right, so we'll export our, our files onto our desktop. Sit back, make yourself a sandwich, have a taco, do whatever you need to do, um, and wait for those files to export. Once that's done, we're going to pop over to our friend Photoshop, and here is our familiar Photoshop with all of its buttons and bells and whistles. Now, 
typically we're going to pop into this and say, well, this just looks like Photoshop. One thing that I like to do right away is click on window and we're going to click on timeline. This is something you may not use often, but now it's starting to look a little bit like it has some potential for a video editing program. Hey, there's even a little film strip at the bottom, scissors. We can cut things out, fast forward, play, do things like that. That's pretty darn cool if you ask me. Next, we'll click file, new, then we'll see the document type. Now the document type is something that I never clicked on prior to finding out you could do video inside Photoshop, but you need to click it. It's very important here. What you'll do is click file type and go down or document type and click on film and video. And then the size we want to select HDTV 1080p 29.97 um, for the frame rate. Now don't worry about that frame rate right now. We're going to change that here in a little bit for web distribution based on what I found with web distribution frame rates. But we do need to give this a title. So we'll just call this time lapse. Press OK. And now it still looks like Photoshop. This looks like a still image. What are we doing here? Don't worry. Next step, we need to start bringing in those photos. Now Photoshop is really smart and this is where it's really blew me away. We're going to click create video timeline and we see that it creates a new layer, which is cool. Um, like I said, we can change that frame rate. If you just go over to the right side of this little box under the timeline video, a window that we had pop up in our toolbar, we can click that, go down to set timeline frame rate and the best frame rate that I found for web distribution happens to be 23.976 frames per second. So that's usually a good one to go with. Click OK. If you're wondering the why behind that, just plug in 23.9 blah 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 frame rate um, for web distribution and there's probably a good explanation behind it that um, is probably similar to what I read but I found this is the best one. From here we need to click layer. Then we need to go down to video layers, click new video from file, and then we just need to go into that folder that we just exported our files to in a sequence and click that first file, that first JPEG that we exported out and, light, and Photoshop will do the rest. Now if you didn't do the sequence you're going to run into a problem that I did. I lost all these photos unless I go re-export them and recreate this tutorial for you. Um, and I have to re-export them so they're in a sequence. I went ahead and used a custom naming scheme so there's actually a gap in here in some of these files so Photoshop's saying uh-uh there's not a 2841 in here there's only a 2840 so it's out of sequence so make sure that you're they're in sequence but otherwise if they are in sequence it's really simple you're just gonna click the first file in there press open Photoshop's going to spin its little wheel around do some thinking depending on your computer speed it'll be fast slow time to get grab a cup of water whatever you need to do and you're ready to go now we have two layers here the first layer layer zero we don't actually need let me show you why let me go to my desktop I created this one earlier before I went out and decided to get you some content for this uh, tutorial here and this is what happened looks great I have a picture of a sky shot that I did a bunch of shots together but then it turns white and then black while still playing why does it do that that's layer zero we don't need it go ahead and just select it make sure it's highlighted press the delete key on your keyboard and it'll go away boom it's gone problem solved next thing you'll notice when I was in Lightroom I didn't take a picture of just the prairie life sign I took a picture of a street scene so we need to fix that in order to do that we're going to use the transform tool inside Photoshop but we want to do it non-destructively and that's very important because non-destructively um, helps us go back and make changes should we have an error so in order to do that what we need to do is right click on this layer and we need to click convert to smart object and this helps us do this non-destructively which is pretty darn slick alright from here we're going to hit a command or a control T as in token or Thomas and then we'll hit a command or a control zero to zoom all the way out we'll hold our shift key and go directly from this corner and drag in so it fits our frame now what you'll notice here is I'm losing some off of the bottom off the frame here and I can crop it in all the way here but we're gonna see this negative space off to the right hand side of the screen and it's not gonna fill it um, so I what I can do is leave it like this where I crop some off the bottom which looks just fine if I absolutely have to have my logo in there because I'm feeling really like I really need to have it I can make it look all smushed and uh, smush it in there and it kinda looks okay but sometimes you have to make that artistic call of whether or not you want to crop that part off to make the video and the picture still look nice and proportional now we're almost done all we have to do is click the little check mark up top or simply press return or enter on our keyboard that removes the free transform tool here in Photoshop 
Now we're ready to export it out. When we export, we just go like we'd export a picture out of Photoshop. We go down to render video. And before I move on to that, I will let you know you can press play um, down at the bottom, but it's not going to do a good job giving you a preview of it no matter how fast your computer is. It might, and I would be surprised if you comment and say your computer did a good job with that, but it's better just to render the video because it doesn't take long and you can always delete it if you don't like it. So click render video. Um, from here you want to select the folder of where you want it to go. Make sure you don't put it in the trash like I did. Um, go back to that desktop folder or that drive folder where you created your time lapse. Click choose. Make sure that it says Adobe Media Encoder. Encoder. And from there, you're just going to render it. It's going to create the video. You can hit a Command Q on a Mac or an Alt F4 on a PC to quit. You can save it if you want to. I don't save it after it creates um, the video and I've verified it's created because I can always go back and do this process again because it's so darn simple and quick. I don't really see a need for this to take real estate inside my hard drive, so I'm just going to click Don't Save. And now we have ourselves a time lapse. So here is what our hard work gave us. We'll go ahead and double click it, give ourselves a full screen view, and I'll let you see what all of that work, which is very little, um, brought us. Now, like I said, if you pay attention to composition, lighting, and all those other cool things, you can come out with one fantastic time-lapse video. But here, it's a little bit lacking, but I was just so darn excited. I just went out and wanted to get you content to show you that you can use an otherwise known photo editing program to create a video you can share on Facebook and social media. And I can't stress it enough. This is exploding as a piece of content. You need to actually have um, videos out there on Facebook to get your name out there. I think videos are so darn important. They're overlooked, and Facebook is really promoting them. So I hope this information is beneficial and helpful. Please tune into the Improved Photography um, podcast for more information on this um, that will be airing on Thursday. Um, also, head on over to improvephotography.com to hear great tips, tricks, and techniques from great, outstanding photographers that will help you improve your photography skills in ways that you never imagined. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.